Did you know there's a method that can help increase your actuarial starting salary and help you stand out to actuarial employers and drastically increase your chances of getting hired and possibly lead to multiple job offers and allow for bigger bonuses? This is the exact method that we teach members of our Actuary Accelerator community so that they can get their first actuarial job as quickly and easily as possible. And today I'm going to be teaching you this exact same method. I'm Bria, associate of the Society of Actuaries and leader of the Actuary Actuary Accelerator community. Now your actuarial starting salary is correlated with the quality of candidate that you are. If you've watched this channel for a while now, you already know that a quality candidate doesn't necessarily just mean that you've passed a bunch of exams. You might have heard that the competition for actuarial positions right now is fairly competitive and that is absolutely true. But not every actuarial candidate is equal. There are different levels. Some are higher quality than others. Basically, entry level actuarial candidates can be broken down into four main categories. I like to think about it like a pyramid because the largest portion of aspiring actuaries are in the very bottom level, the beginner candidate level. But as a beginner candidate reaches certain milestones and qualifications, they become a rising candidate. Then once even more are met, they become an intermediate candidate. And then once they've met all the qualifications that an employer finds ideal in an actuarial candidate, they become a top candidate. Now, essentially, as you move up this pyramid, you become a a better and higher quality actuarial candidate. Now think about it for a second. If you were a hiring manager for an actuarial position, which type of candidate would you want to attract? The beginner, the rising, the intermediate, or the top candidate? You're probably thinking the answer is obvious, right? You're going to pick the top actuarial candidate because they have the most relevant skills and qualifications that you're looking for, the skills that you need in order to do the job. So what does that mean for you as an aspiring actuary? Well, if you want to give your yourself the best possible chance of getting an actuarial job, which level of candidate do you want to be? You probably said top candidate, and that is absolutely right. And here at Etch Actuarial, we honestly believe that if you become a top candidate, it's almost inevitable that you will be able to get an actuarial job. Now, why do we believe that? Well, there are multiple reasons. First off, well, we've interviewed tons of aspiring actuaries that have managed to get their first actuarial job, and they were top candidates. There's Emma, there's Brighton, there's JD, there's Ashley, there's Madison. All of these are people that we've mentioned on the YouTube channel before. And for some of them, we've even interviewed them. So I will link down below in the description to those interviews so you can watch them after. Now, even myself, I was an actuarial candidate when I got my first job. So over and over, we've seen that top candidates do not have trouble getting actuarial jobs. Then there was also the time that I studied 100 entry-level actuarial jobs. And what I found was that a top candidate would be eligible and and great candidates for any one of those 100 entry-level actuarial jobs. On top of that, I also have six years of experience working in actuarial positions, so I know what entry-level candidates are doing day to day. And I've seen that if top candidates are applying to these positions, then they're going to have all the skills that entry-level candidates really need to do the job well. So all three of those reasons combined together are what has really convinced me and my team that becoming an actuarial candidate is really the number one way Way to stand out to employers. And if you do that, it's almost inevitable that you'll be able to get an actuarial job. I mean, why wouldn't an employer want to hire someone that's a top candidate? They have all the skills and qualities that they're looking for. It'd be like me saying no thanks to the best dessert in the world, like these raspberry almond tarts. These are the best tarts in the world and I would absolutely never say no to one. And that's what an employer feels like when they get a top candidate apply for their job. Now, this video is about your starting salary so let's get more into that. Now, think about this for a second. If an employer has a top candidate and an intermediate candidate apply for a job, who are they most likely to pay the higher salary to? If there's an intermediate candidate and a top candidate, who's most likely to get more job offers? For both of those, you probably answered top candidate, right? So that means a top candidate is already more likely to get a higher salary. And it also means that if they do get multiple offers, they're also going to have negotiation power. Now, negotiation power basically basically means that let's say there's a candidate that has a $50,000 offer, but another company offers them $55,000. Well, they can go to this company that's offering 50,000 and tell them about this offer that they have. And that might encourage this company to offer them a higher salary or maybe some other bonuses like a signing bonus or something just in order to attract them to their company. Having negotiation power means that you have options and different employers are going to fight to have you on 
on their team if you're a really great candidate. Employers know that they've hit gold when they find a top actuarial candidate, so they will be willing to go quite far in order to attract you to their team. They want you. But the opposite is also true. You, as a top candidate, should know and be confident in the value that you can provide to these companies, and you should fight to be compensated for that. Now, let's think about bonuses and raises too for a second. Most employers give a salary bonus or raise at the end of each year or whenever you pass an actuarial exam. And most of the time, these bonuses and raises are calculated as a percentage of your current salary. So what happens if you start with a higher salary? Well, it means that you're going to have bigger bonuses and raises because you started with a higher salary. And that means that your salary is going to increase over time at a faster rate than it would otherwise. Awesome, right? Okay, so here is your next step. Right now, you should figure out what level of candidate you are currently at. So right down below in the description of this video, I'm going to link to my actuary candidate quiz. And this is going to help you figure out which level, beginner, rising, intermediate, or top candidate that you are. And this is going to help you figure out if you're already a top candidate, but if you are not, it's going to provide you advice on what to do to get to the top candidate level so that you can have a higher starting salary when you go looking for your first actuarial job. Becoming a top actuarial candidate is the best way to increase your starting salary, so make sure you go check out that quiz right now. Okay, so that is all for today. I'm probably going to go eat a tart now, so I will see you in the next video. Bye for now!